Grace and peace be unto you from our crucified and risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Several years ago, one of our co-directors of education here was a woman by the name of Shanda. Shanda and her husband have two children. They don't live here anymore. But at that time, they had their older child, little Olivia. And Olivia was probably about two and a half years old. And she was smart and uh, inquisitive and very verbal and uh, just a delight. And one of my favorite stories was when Olivia was in Sunday morning worship with her parents one Sunday morning, and it came to the part where we were saying the, the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father, I believe in Jesus Christ. And we got to the phrase in the creed, and he suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried. And it was though Olivia kind of heard die and buried, like for the first time. And she just was so agitated, and she turns to Shanda, to her mom, she goes, Mommy, Mommy, Jesus died? He died? And, of course, Shanda, the, being the good mom that she is, she's kind of, and, you know, trying to be kind of quiet, but, yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay, Olivia. Uh, he rose again. He's not dead anymore. He's alive. But he died. He <laughs> died, and she just could not get past died. And I've always liked that story because it's so honest, and it's so real, and it's so, such a raw response. But it's easy to get stuck in death. The women who came to the tomb on that first Easter morning were stuck in death. The East, Easter Gospels we just read begins this way. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They came expecting to anoint a dead body. They came expecting death. They came stuck in grief and loss. But they were met with life instead of death, life, instead of despair, hope, instead of the end, a new beginning. In their confusion and fright, they were met with life from this message given to them from these two men, the angelic beings in this dazzling clothes, who say to them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here, but is risen. Remember? Remember how he told you that the Son of Man must be handed over, crucified, and after three days rise again? He is not here, but is risen. That's our Easter proclamation. That's the center of all our Christian preaching. It's our anchor. It's our core. It's the center. And it is incredibly good news. He is not here, but is risen. Remember. During Lent, we gathered every Wednesday night around the theme of creed, foundations of faith. And we used a DVD study by that same title, Creed, by Pastor Adam Hamilton. And in the last session, the last Wednesday, we explored the last two lines of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And the last story of that series, that Adam Hamilton tells is of a, a couple from his congregation who receive a, a terrible word. They receive the news that their son, a recent college grad, had been out hiking and while hiking had lost his footing and had fallen to his death. And Adam says later that afternoon he was able to reach this grieving father by phone and he got a hold of him. He said, I'm so terribly sorry. I don't know what to say. And he could hear the pain in this father's voice. And then this father said something to him that Adam Hamilton said he's never forgotten. This father said, Adam, there's only one thing that's holding me together right now. And I'm remembering 
some words I memorized in confirmation class. And what's that, he asked. And he began to, to recite, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, crucified, dead, and was buried. But on the third day, and his voice got stronger, on the third day rose again. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. And then his voice got even stronger and more determined. And I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Adam, right now, that is all that's holding me together. How well we know those words. How well I know those words. In the midst of all our losses and grief, it is what holds us together. And it is because of this day, this day of resurrection, that we have good news to proclaim, to share. And it is this astonishing news of that angelic announcement. He's not here, but has risen. And that holds us together. Without this, we would have nothing. For you see an empty tomb and a risen Lord changes everything. It's what holds us together, how true those words are. When our son Dan died now about two and a half years ago, I experienced such excruciating pain and sadness that I have never known in my life. And through that sadness and grief and tears, there would be a verse that the, the Spirit would bring into my mind at different times. It was, it's a Bible verse, but a verse that for years we've sung in the liturgy as the gospel ac acclamation. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. After our son Dan's funeral service, which was here, and the burial, we went to our home, and we had a house full of company. And that day, December 27th, was also the day six years prior that my nephew died in a car accident at age 29. And I could see my brother was having a really tough time. My brother, of course, was with us. And I could see him hurting, too. And at one point, we were kind of scattered and talking in different groups. And I said, we have to come together. We have to pray. And, and we came into the living room, and we made a big circle, and we held hands. And it was that voice, that, that verse that, that God brought back into me. And I, I started that prayer amidst tears. And I said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. when all our foundations give way and we don't know where to go with the challenges, with the losses of this life. We're called, we're called to remember that we have a risen Lord and to bring all that to this risen Lord who meets us right here today and who will meet us after all these beautiful flowers will fade away, will meet us in all our tomorrows, in all those places where we meet dead ends or what seem like dead ends. But remember, remember in God's hands a new beginning. Instead of death, life, instead of an end, a new beginning. For you see an empty tomb. And a risen Lord changes everything. But some might say, some may say, can you prove it? Can you prove the resurrection? Oh, we'll never prove in scientific ways the, the resurrection as any promise. We're called to trust. And we'll see evidence of of, of resurrection all around us. All around us, right here in the body of Christ. We'll see signs of resurrection life where lives are changed. 
and where hope is restored, where forgiveness is bestowed, where, where love is shared. It's all signs of our gracious God who brings life again and again and again out of all those little deaths we experience in this life. It was Easter 2015, and it was the first Easter after our son had died, now what would have been three months prior. And I was weeping. It was Saturday before Easter, and I was in tears. I had made it through Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and preached at those, and, and now it was, I had some time to just let down. And I did. And I was crying. But I was also having to get ready. I was at home getting ready to come and meet a, baptism, a couple for baptism class here at church. So I was getting ready but crying. But then we received a phone call. And it was a phone call from a pastor friend of ours by the name of Don McKee, a pastor in our synod. And he called and he said, we put him on speakerphone, he said, I just have to talk to the two of you. I just have to share with the two of you today. And he went on, he said, I dreamt about Daniel, our son, last night. And I hardly ever dream, he said. And if I do, I hardly ever remember it. But I remember this dream so vividly. And we said, well, what is it? And he went on to share. He said, well, the dream was this, that the three of you, you and, and Larry, my husband, you and Larry and Daniel were swimming in a body of water. And he said he was watching, and in the dream he said, hey, what's going on here? And a voice said, they're swimming in the water of baptism. And Daniel had this huge smile on his face. And then the voice said, see, he's okay. Dan's okay. And then the looks on our faces all turned to these big smiles, and we all swam away. And that was the end of the dream. But he said, I just had to call. I felt this urge to call and to share that with you today. Well, as you can imagine, it's just what I needed. It was a gift. And it helped me. It helped me. Not in any fix-it kind of way, but it was, it, it was a gift from the living Lord who uses his body in this world to be those signs of, of resurrection, life, and hope. And I was able to go into that Easter morning with that gift, with hope restored. You see, an empty tomb and a risen Lord changes everything and meets us today with the gift of new life. And it is what holds us together. I want to end my message, my Easter message today, with a brief video. It's about three minutes long, and you're going to see just some tiny white words on a black screen. And if you're way out there, it might be a little hard to read them, but the narrator will read them all. So listen. And at first it sounds like the narrator's debunking everything, but just wait and watch. Let's listen. Let's watch. Easter is coming, but for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. There is too much pain and suffering in the world today. Death has the last word. It would therefore be foolish to say that the life and death of a first century Jew named Jesus makes a difference. Why? Might makes right. Power is superior to compassion, and despair is stronger than hope. So I refuse to believe a man can come back from the dead. Sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept. Resurrection is a false hope. How can you say an empty tomb changes everything? Don't you see God loves the world is a lie? Money is God and the one who dies with the most toys wins. I will tell you what I tell my children. There is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. 
There is no mystery in everyday life, and there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people. Many of us simply do not believe that God can give life to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. But what if the testimony of the women at the tomb was true? Then God can give life to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. Many of us simply do not believe that there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people. There is no mystery in everyday life, and there is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. I will tell you what I tell my children. The one who dies with the most toys wins and money is God is a lie. God loves the world. Don't you see? An empty tomb changes everything. How can you say resurrection is a false hope? Sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept. A man can come back from the dead. So I refuse to believe despair is stronger than hope. Power is superior to compassion and might makes right. Why? The life and death of a first century Jew named Jesus makes a difference. It would therefore be foolish to say that death has the last word. There is too much pain and suffering in the world today, but for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. Easter is coming. Don't you see? Don't you see? An empty tomb and a risen Lord changes everything. Stuck in death, no more. For Christ is risen, and we too shall arise. And like a mother said to her little girl, it's okay, Olivia, it's okay. He's not dead anymore. He's alive. Jesus is alive. All the powers of death and sin and evil defeated. And it is incredibly good news. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please stand now as you are able. As